In part two of using units, we're going to talk about some specific examples of problems in mechanics. And so we have the following worksheet. We go to the top here. Example of mechanic problem using units. We have a problem of curvilinear motion where we are to determine the velocity. So here we could type in in um, text the equals that's what we need to determine, and then and then start typing the data that we know. For example, we say determine the velocity of a particle moving in a circular tra trajectory at time t equals 20 seconds along the trajectory. If the particle starts with a speed of 5.2 meters per second at time t zero equals Five meters. That's and there's a typo right there. There should be five seconds. Okay, so we have the notes right here. Five seconds. And with a tangential acceleration of 4.5 meters per second squared. In brackets here, we indicated how you need to type your data using units. And so, if you want to, you could create your own worksheet and pause this video and follow this instruction to reproduce these results. That's basically definition of the variables that are needed. And then this equation comes from linear motion, where the velocity at time t is equal to v sub 0 plus the acceleration multiplied by t minus the initial time. In most cases, this is equal to 0, so you only see v0 plus at times t. And then once you um, in input or uh, write out this equation, then you get your result in units of the international system. As an exercise, and giving you this problem of curvilinear motion, where you have the radius of a path. Remember, rho is r, control g, and in this case, it will be 100 meters. The speed of the particle is 20 meters per second. Remember to put quote, quote, before the m and the s, not a single quote. And then you have your a n, v squared divided by rho. Try that on your own. Okay, we have an object is launched vertically upwards. For the next problem, we have an object that is launched vertically upward with a speed of 20 meters per second. Initial speed. How, mo how much time will it take to reach the highest point? So we type here in, in, in text t equals what? And how high is that point? Let's say that would be a position. So these are our unknowns. Uh, subject to a uniform negative acceleration g, which is the acceleration of gravity. X mass to include the standard definition. Actually, it should be quote g. It's a unit. It's a is a symbol that's available as units, and so g is 9.867. Initial value y is of zero, uh, so that is y actually what we're looking for. And initial velocity 20 meters per second. In brackets, it is indicated how you're going to define your y0 and your v0. And then this is the equation that defines the velocity at time t after it has been launched, uh, v0, ge. The highest point of the trajectory is reached when the velocity temporarily becomes equal to zero. And so to find time from this equation, we solve uh, V sub zero minus V over GE. So type in this equation just simply as saying T 
quote v dot zero minus v space bar divided by quote g sub e. All right, and then this formula is from accelerated motion, where we have a negative acceleration equal to minus g sub e, and so that is typed as y got y dot zero plus v dot zero times t minus one half times g and the quote g sub e times t squared, <coughs> and it gives me the distance in meters. Okay, uh, and this is an exercise here determine the time required for the object to return to the launching point. That is for y equals zero. Well, to give you an idea, we have this equation right here that determines the position. And so, if you know y sub zero, which is equal to zero, to return to the point of launch, y should be equal to y sub zero, which means you have a quadratic equation on t. Okay. And so use the quadratic equation or use solve to obtain that result. Here's another problem. A particle of mass 20 kilograms is acted upon by a force of 50 newtons. What would be the resulting acceleration? So we're going to type here double quote A, sorry, double quote A equal what? Determine the mom momentum of the particle to the force that acted upon it for five seconds. So we're going to have to find out a velocity and calculate a momentum, which is m times that velocity that we're going to calculate. And then we have what would be the distance traveled. Let's say position in those five seconds. So we do have a time of five seconds. Or is the work exerted, which would be equal to um, uh, force times uh, position from time space. And then we have the power. Um, actually, momentum is lowercase p. Lowercase p, which is going to be equal to the work accepted at any time. And so we have Newton's second law from which we can deduce that acceleration is equal to force divided by mass. Then using equations of linear motion, we can find the velocity after the period of five seconds. Since we have the acceleration right here, that's one data point that we need, and then the time required is five seconds. And so that gives my velocity at the, to the end of those five seconds. And the moment, or momentum, sorry, is equal to 250 kilograms per meters per second. Position, it, since it's a uniformly accelerated motion, the position is given by this, where s sub zero is uh, position zero. And so that gives me 31.25 meters. Work is times, is force times distance, I'm giving in joules, and power in watts. They want me to repeat this solution by changing units to the English system. Remember that when we define Using units of the English system, say mass, quote, 10, quote, slug, and force, column, 150, quote, LVF. For example, the acceleration would be force, sorry, F, F divided by M. But it gives me units of the international system. And if I want units of the English system to be consistent with the solution, I will have to type what ft divided by what s squared, okay, and so on. Repeat the uh, solution from above using the mass of tens loop f150 pound t equal 10 seconds. Well, that exercise is exactly a repetition from the previous one, so let's delete it. 
Here's another exercise with uh, solve the following problem of thermal expansion. And we have these formulas to use. I'm giving you the data and centigrade and so on. Now, to enter temperature data, um, for example, TF 40 centigrade, you have to type T dot F column. And then it's uh, 40 centigrade, centigrade, sorry. You could go here and look under the funnel for temperature and find Celsius. Because I have the little, the little degree symbol in there. And uh, let's do this problem. And so T sub 0 is 20 centigrade. So again, from the funnel find temperature centigrade, so Celsius. And the initial length L0, oh, L0 is 10 centimeters. So let me try that again. So I'm going to delete this. I'm going to move the things to the right. And put L dot zero equal ten ten centimeters. All right. And the coefficient of thermal expansion A control G dot uppercase S point oh five what centimeter divided by centigrade. And so here I'm gonna go to temperature. All right, so then I have these formulas to use D, uppercase D, control G, L, uppercase L, quote. I'm just going to copy since I have it typed in here. Control C, control V equals. And it says units don't match. Which is interesting because they should. I mean, TF, let's see, let's see what we can do here. T F minus T0 equals, it's going to give me something weird because it, it should be down here. So it gives me, and in Kelvin, that's the basic unit of the English system, where uh, here I have per centigrade. And so in this case, when you multiply, I'm going to just copy that and say type times, let's try 20 quote K. It, it, it gives me a unit not matching, and, and the problem here is that temperature, temperatures cannot be easily, um, easily handled like that, and so I'm going to try something. I'm going to delete this one here and go to my units and go to temperature and say change in centigrade. Let's see if that it did. It did. That, that's the trick. That's the trick. Once I put delta cent centigrades, it gives me my result. So be careful with that. Units. And temperature are kind of weird. And so um, to calculate the final length, well, that's as simple as saying L dot F equal L zero plus D control G L equal. And then you say, well, your D delta L is not defined. That's weird because it is. It's right there. Let's try that. Hmm. Let's say L L dot zero plus V control G L. I may have well, I'm just gonna control copy this and paste it here. Huh? I don't know. I may have typed something strange in there like a I don't know. Anyway, just be careful with those things. And we're gonna
going to talk in the next video about some notes about the use of units and solving the question with units. So we'll leave this for the next video.